Hello, everyone. My name is Jose Alcerreca. I'm an engineer on the developer relations team. In this talk, I'm going to walk you through five ways Compose has changed how we test UIs. So let's start with a wish list. Tests should be easy to write, they should run quickly, and they should be reliable. But this is not always the case. Compose was designed with testability in mind, so can we say this is true now? Well, not completely, but it has improved the testing experience enormously. So let's look at five ways it did. We'll start with testing in isolation. What does this mean? When you create a Compose test, you can launch one of your activities, like we've always done, or you can start an empty one and set the content yourself. That content is a composable context, so it can be anything, a whole app, it can be a single screen, it can be part of a screen, or even the tiniest composable. Because Compose is declarative, whenever you set content, that composable is basically going to uh, tell you what it needs to render. Uh, in this example, a list of items and a callback, which is normally empty in tests. It's as easy as creating a preview. The next improvement is about synchronization. This is how the test knows when to send the next action or perform the next session. In the view world, you need uh, to use tools and frameworks like Espresso, which have ways to figure out if the app is, app is, is busy or idle, and views don't have a way to tell you if they're busy. However, that's exactly what Compose does. It exposes a much more straightforward signal to the tests, making them much more reliable and faster. So if you've ever written a thread.sleep in your tests, and I see some guilty faces here, now it's probably the time to remove them. Of course, you still need to handle all, all the asynchronous operations that might be happening across all the layers of your app, so check out our, our documentation on that. The way this works is with something called automatic synchronization, and normally you don't have to think too much about it, unless, of course, you want to pause it, which brings us to number three, uh, controlling time. In Compose, tests uh, can pause time Oh, sorry, in Compose tests, you can pause time or advance the clock as much as you need to and do an assertion at that point in time. The assertion happens immediately. You don't even have to wait for the clock to be advanced. The way you do this is pretty simple. You set the auto advance property of the main clock to false. Then you call advance time by, passing a number of milliseconds, or you can also go frame by frame. But why would you want to control time in tests? Well, this is very useful for any apps that handle time one way or another, like a stopwatch, but it's also great for testing animations. For example, you can verify state or take a screenshot at particular times and make sure that you never have regressions. Speaking of time, the next one is about waiting for things to happen. As mentioned before, you should never sleep uh, in your tests and you can rely on automatic synchronization instead. However, as tests grow in scope, it gets harder to deal with all the asynchronous operations that are going on, and in end-to-end -end tests, it might not even be worth it. Instead of that, we can tell the test to wait until something happens. So for those few end-to-end -end tests, there is a Compose API called Wait Until that I really like for this scenario. It will pause your test until its, its body is true. So you can look for a particular element or do whatever you need to synchronize your tests without waiting for an arbitrary time. The fifth one is about testing um, state restoration. Managing state and restoring it after a configuration change, like a rotation or some foldable gesture, can get tricky. So it's important to test it. You can emulate a configuration change by uh, restarting the whole activity using the recreate method in Activity Scenario, which is an Android X, uh, which is an API in Android X test. But now with Compose, you have a new op uh, option called State Restoration Tester, which is very easy to use. You just set the content through the tester and then trigger a recreation. The state will be saved and restored as if a configuration change happened, but much quicker and simpler. Testing UIs has improved a lot with Compose. So if you need another excuse to migrate or start with Compose, testing is a great one. These were just five features, but there are a lot more. So check out the Compose testing documentation for more details and resources. Thank you.